Sonny Dollar. Harry McQueen, Mid-Eastern Indemnity Corporation. Now, I'm glad you called, Harry. What? I've just been waiting for a chance to run down to New York, have some fun, taking a few shows and some nightlife. Yeah, On yeah. expense account, of course. Now, look, we'll pay the expense account, but not for a lot of theaters and nightclubs. Spoil sport. Johnny, can you come down here right away? Sure. Good. What's the trouble, Harry? Dan Diamond. Dan Diamond? That's right. Well, nice talking to you. Now, what's that mean? It means I suddenly think I have an important assignment in Podunk or Timbuktu. You mean you're afraid to get involved with our friend Mr. Diamond? Ah, It's Johnny. just that I relish the thought of maybe living to a happy middle age is all. Don't you remember what happened on that bank job over in Amityville? Oh, I remember. Not only a bank guard, but a police officer and the investigator from the insurance company. All of them suddenly turned their loving wives into widows. I know. Diamond. So he's still in business, huh? Well, apparently not. And I use that word advisedly. Apparently, he's retired from his career of crime and is growing orchids at his little home in Long Beach, California. Yeah, that is, on the dough from that Amityville job. Uh, that is when he's out there. Oh, where is he now? Right here in New York City, and he just happens to have lifted some $75,000 from a small but expensive jewelry store. Then lock him up and throw the key away. I'm afraid it's not that easy. What's more, we want that 75000 back. Well... Sorry, Harry. You, uh, realize what your commission would be on a 75000 recovery? Hmm. And after all, Johnny, with an unlimited expense account to go on... Uh, Johnny? Um, uh, okay, Harry. Maybe I'll run on down there and see you. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mid-Eastern Indemnity Corporation, New York City. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the P.O. matter. So who wants to tangle with a character like Danny Diamond? But that bait Harry McQueen dangled in front of me was too much to refuse. Expense account item 1770 for a train to New York and a cab to his office on Park Avenue. Friday afternoon, Johnny, week before last. They were about to send a pile of money over to the bank. And... Diamond simply walked in, put a gun on the man at the vault, made him crawl under a table, and then scooped up the 75000 and slipped out into the street before the vault man could hit the alarm button. Easy as that. That's a lot of money to walk around with. He was careful to take it mostly in 50 and $100 bills. The vault man didn't try to put up a fight? Against Danny Diamond? And get killed for sure? Well, how do you know who he was? Danny told him. He what? Just like he identified himself on that Amityville job you mentioned, like he did on every job he ever pulls. We were lucky that no one got killed on this one. You said he's here in New York. Where? I understand the PD is going to release him sometime today. Release him? That's right. Thanks to a smart lawyer, an alibi they can't seem to break, and, well, let's face it, lack of evidence. Yeah, you mean the money. That's exactly what I mean. And, of course, it's that money that we're primarily interested in. Well, Johnny? Uh... Who's handling this for the police department? Man over at the 18th Precinct, uh, Lieutenant uh, Singer. Randy Singer? Yeah, that's the one. But he's in homicide. Well, I don't know about that, but I know he's the top man on this case. Why? There's been no killing. Johnny, why don't you ask him? Yeah, why don't I? Because on nearly every previous job that Dapper Danny pulled, there was a killing. And I was assigned to him. I got to know him and his routine, his methods, better than anybody else in town. But not well enough to nail him down. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid that's true. Anyway, they made a special out of this one and put me on it. And from the way you say that, Randy, you haven't got very far. Johnny, I haven't got the first base. Oh, well, sure, we locked him up on suspicion, got the D.A. to really cloud up and rain all over him, but thanks to that... Smart mouthpiece he hired, and an alibi so solid you couldn't smash it with a hydrogen bomb. Plus, no sign of the money. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, they're letting him loose, and he'll go back to California free as a bird, and 75 G's is a good. 
You sure it was Danny Diamond pulled this one, huh? Well, everything, Johnny. His perfect timing, his modus operandi, that egotistical trick of identifying himself, the description of him, his doing it solo, the fact he didn't stash it away in a bank. I've checked every bank in town. Well, everything, Johnny, says it's him. You mean it's he? Hmm? Watch your English, Randy. No, English, English to heck with it. Him's the... I mean, he's the one that did it. But unless we can lay our hands on that 75 pounds... Have you checked out where he's been staying? What, are you kidding? He went over with a fine-tooth comb. Nothing in his hotel room, his luggage, no little package left in the hotel, save nothing. He gave us a list of where he's been, what he's done since he got in town, and it all checked out to the minute. Yet somehow he managed to stash away that wad of money. Now, you find it, Johnny, and we'll nail him. Now, what's to have stopped him from passing it to some pal for safekeeping no, 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 Johnny. You sure of that? Now, Diamond works alone. He'd no more let anybody else have a gander at that money. Why, Danny wouldn't trust it with anybody short of the United States government. <laughs> and I'm sure he isn't turning any of it over to Uncle Sam. Ask me, Randy, you got a pretty thin case against him. Yeah, but I'd bet my own life that he did this job. And if you or I or anybody can find that dough on him or anywhere near him... You'll nail him. You said it. Uh, you want to take a crack at him? Uh, mighty thin case, though. Johnny? Okay, if you're so sure that he's the one, Randy, well, that's good enough for me. Oh, what are you going to do? Answer your phone. Hmm? Oh, oh, sure. Singer. Yeah? Yeah? Well, where'd he... Okay, then all I can do is alert somebody out where he lives to... Yeah. Let him go, Johnny. He's on his way. To where? Who knows? Okay, then I'm on my way. Yeah, where? What are you going to do? The coin a real corny one. California, here I come. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way, with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now... Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the P.O. Matter. I got a recent picture and a complete description of Danny Diamond from Lieutenant Randy Singer. And I'll find out who you ought to contact there at the PD in Long Beach, Johnny, and uh, send you a telegram. Then I spent item two, $166 and a quarter for a plane ticket to Los Angeles. When I got aboard, I began to think that maybe I'd fallen into some luck for a change. And uh, not for the usual reason. Though, of course, I'd hoped to find myself next to a gorgeous blonde with ideas and plenty of time on her hands. No, it was because the passenger sitting right next to me holding a big dispatch case in his lap, and I mean holding on to it, was none other than... Diamond's the name. Danny Diamond. What's yours, mister? It's uh, Reynolds. Jerry Reynolds. Oh. For a minute, I, I thought there was something familiar. I guess I was wrong. But, uh... Haven't I heard about you somewhere? Oh, I don't know why not. Danny Diamond? Dapper Danny, they call me. Oh, yeah. Oh, you probably read about me in the papers. Lousy bunch of New York cops trying to hang that jewelry store heist on me. Yeah, something like 75000 wasn't it? Yeah. That's going to keep somebody real happy for a long, long time, Mr. Uh, what'd you say your name is? Uh, Reynolds. Jerry Reynolds. Yeah. Try to pin it on Danny Diamond, huh? I'd like to see him pin anything on me. Not because I haven't been trying. Trying for years, Johnny. That's Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. But they're wasting their time. 
<laughs> Just like they're wasting their time trying to find that 75 G's. Hey, look, don't get me wrong, Mr. Diamond. Uh, call me Danny. But the way you're hanging on to that dispatch case, you'd think it was loaded with... Uh... Yeah? Yeah, what about it? Nothing. Just forget I mentioned it. Yeah. And don't you get me wrong. Maybe you'll stay a lot happier, let's say, if you forget that you mentioned it, too. Well, now, look, Danny, I... Just forget it. Sure. Why not? You, uh... You live in Los Angeles? No. Long Beach. Why? Oh, I just wonder. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to L.A. for? Oh, just to spend some time with an old pal of mine. Eh? Who? Where's he live? A section of L.A. called Westwood Village. It's out beyond Beverly Hill. Yeah, I know, I know. What's his name? <laughs> well, now, look, does it make any difference? So maybe I know. Maybe we got mutual friends. What's his name? Johnstone. Johnstone? That's right, Jack Johnstone. What'd he do? Oh, he's a writer, among other things. I don't know. Moving pictures? Radio, television. Radio, huh? That's right. I don't know. I hardly thought you would. Something kind of familiar about that name, though. See, I listen to the radio, you know what I mean? Doesn't everybody? See, look, I'm going back in the galley, see if I can pry another drink out of that blonde stewardess. Well, I doubt if you'll have any luck, but go ahead. Just leave it to me. You want me to bring you one? Why not? If you can't, leave it to me. He carefully set the dispatch case on the seat. But as he swung back up the aisle, he kept half looking over his shoulder. If I picked it up and tried to open it, he'd know exactly what I was doing. Even as he stood there talking to the stewardess, trying to force some money on her, he kept his eyes on me. But I had to find out what was in that case. And what I could do was keep looking out the window and with one hand, open the clasps on it. That much he couldn't see. And when he came back to his seat with his hands full, all I'd have to do... How dumb can they be? Those chicks would make a lot of extra dough. Make a lot of friends, too, if they forget the rules now. And then with that liquor they got back there. Well, sit down. Don't worry about it. Hey, wait a minute. Two seats up. That guy's sneaking a bottle out of his coat. I'll bet you a tense bottle get that for you and me. Wait and see. But again, he kept his eyes on me. Even while he passed over the money and parted the other man from his half-pint bottle and the small plastic cup he had. But this time, as he came back to his seat, his hands were full. See? You got brains, a little money, you get anything you want. Sure. Hey, uh, here, I'll move this case out of the way so you can... Oops. You say what? What do you think? You clumsy, crazy jerk. The little on? case was loaded. But the papers that fell out that he quickly shoved back into it were not money. No, they were clippings from the New York newspapers. Yeah, news items about the robbery. That was all. Wait, though. Was he using them in the dispatch case for a decoy? Or just to fan that ego of his? You dumb, clumsy fool. Oh, sorry. Sorry, huh? Sure, of course I am. Listen, if I thought maybe you'd done that on purpose... Yeah? Well... I get it. Sure. Now, uh... About that little drink you promised. Sure. Why not? Are you smoking more now, but enjoying it less? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, have a camel. Are you looking for flavor and mildness? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a camel. If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try camels. The Camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor, easygoing mildness, real smoking satisfaction every time you light up. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the P.O. Matter. There wasn't much conversation with Danny Diamond during the rest of the flight. 
At L.A. International Airport, after watching him pick up his luggage, I spent item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car and drove on down to Long Beach, hoping not to see him along the way. I didn't. I got myself a room at the Villa Riviera, then checked with Western Union. Yes, we have, Mr. Dollar. It's from a Lieutenant Randolph Singer. NYPD, whatever that means. New York Police Department. Will you read it to me, please? Yes, sir. I'll be glad to. It says make contact with P.O. P.O.? It says make contact with P.O. Your man is Sergeant Wyman. Oh, oh, I get it. That was a typo. Should have been P.D. The sender must have misspelled it. Oh, sure. But go on, please. Your man is Sergeant Wyman. Good luck. Signed, Randy. That's all? That's all. Okay, thanks. Item four was ten cents for that phone call. Then I wasted no time in getting over to police headquarters into a huddle with Sergeant Raleigh Wyman. Dollar, we knew all about Danny Diamond. What he is, where he got his money for that house of his out on Fern Drive and for living room. But unless he tries to pull something around here, there's... Well, there's nothing we can do. I know what you mean, sir. But if you can get something on him and make it stick, why, this whole town will love you dearly. Uh, something like that 75,000 robbery in New York? Yeah. Oh, Lieutenant Singer told me on the phone that's what you're out here for. That's it? Said some pretty nice things about you, too. Well, if there's anything we can do, if you just... There is. I want to look at not only Danny's home, but the luggage he just brought in the plane. Well, in order to get out a search warrant. No, no search warrant. What? Look, can you get him over here for a couple of hours before he has a chance to unpack and settle down? I made real time driving here. He ought to be arriving just about now. Well, let me think. Hey, call him up. Tell him you want to see him here at headquarters. Can you get him down here? Sure. Sure, he loves to sit around here and shoot off his big mouth and try to make fools out of us. What excuse? Oh, tell him there were some prowlers around his place while he was away. Tell him anything. Now, look, Dollar, if you're planning what I think and without a search warrant... Sergeant, so far as you know, all I'm going to do after I leave you here is take a nice long walk along the beach. Well, okay? Okay, Dollar. I drove quickly out to Danny Diamond's address on Fern Drive. A rather nice, modern little home, by the way, in a very pleasant residential section. Long Beach has a lot of nice homes, and this was one of them. I'd parked a couple of blocks away, and as I sauntered as casually as possible toward his place, a taxi pulled up in front of it. Out came Danny and his luggage. He paid off the driver and went in. And I waited, praying that Sergeant Wyman would call him before he had a chance to... Wyman must have done all right. Within three or four minutes, Danny came out the back door, went into the garage, then pulled away in a fancy little sports car. I went over to the back door and found, much to my surprise, that it was a really easy job to jimmy it open. Danny's handbags were still sitting by the front door. I not only went through them, but through every inch of that house, slowly, carefully, overlooking nothing. And that's exactly what I found. Nothing. Except that it is for a large floor safe under one of the rugs. But I knew he hadn't had time to get to it, and besides the dust around it showed it hadn't been opened recently. No, Randy Singer was wrong. If Danny did take that money, he must have stashed it away somewhere. Or left it with somebody, probably back in New York. Despite what Randy had said about his operating alone, trusting no one, not even the banks, about trusting no one short of the United States government. The government? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I beat it back to police headquarters and Sergeant Raleigh Wyman. I kept him here just as long as I could. Danny only left a couple of minutes ago. A couple of minutes ago, huh? Dollar, did you find anything? No. I mean, during that, uh, well, during your walk along the beach. No, no, no. Now, listen. That telegram Randy sent me. Telegram? Yeah, yeah. Make contact with P.O., he said. P.O.? Well, it was a typo. He meant to say P.D. to contact you. Oh. Well, it was a lucky mistake. Because, Sergeant, I may be nuts, completely nuts, but I'm betting that P.O. is the answer to this whole thing. To how he got that money out of New York, out here where he could oh, use it. Wait a minute. I, Trust I, nothing short of the U.S. government, huh? Feeling all right? P.O., of course. Hey, listen, you know this town where everything is. For well, sure. Then there's just one building around here I need to know the location of. And I hope I can get there before he does. The P.O., the post office I drove to, was only a few blocks from Danny's home. 
Danny's car was parked in front of me. I slipped inside and waited behind a post. At one of the windows, he was second in line, behind a ragged-looking wino who was counting out pennies to buy a stamp. There's two sets. There's three sets. I got another one here somewhere. Come on. Come on, you drunken bum. Don't hey, Clark. Oh, hello, Mr. Diamond. I have a package for you. Yeah, that's what I come for. I've been wondering when you'd call for it. It's uh, from New York City. Just, just sign here, please. Yeah, sure. Okay, here you are. Thank you, Mr. Diamond. Here's your package. I want a stamp. I came out from behind the post, bumped into the drunk, and tore at the wrapper of Danny's package. Hey, hey what's a big idea? You... Sorry. It, it's you. It's you. And here in the package, you mail to yourself the 75,000 bucks. No, get away. Get back. Oh, no, Danny. What are you trying to do on here? Okay. Now on your feet. Listen. Listen, mister. Oh, drop dead, Danny. Or maybe the state will take care of that. Now, listen. About that money. Forget it. Just take a look at that poor old drunk who was in front of you. That wild shot you pulled off. Huh? Murder, Danny. Now it's murder. So, from here on in, of course, it's in the hands of the law, the courts. As to credit for solving this one? Well, actually, it all goes to a simple typographical error. <laughs> Funny. Expense account total, including hotel on the trip back to Hartford... Three ninety-seven seventy. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight, is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a real wildy, a real strain on my sanity. But I think you'll like it. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Herb Vigran, James McCallion, Stacey Harris, and Gil Stratton. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Next, a modern mystery classic, Agnes Moorhead's eighth suspense performance of Sorry, Wrong Number on the CBS Radio Network. You are invited to attend Barani Berth's fifth annual sports night, co-sponsored by Gideon Lodge Number 140 and the Albany Olympic Committee. Admission is free, so plan to be there starting at 8 p.m. on Thursday, February 18th at Chancellor's Hall to greet Mr. Olympics himself, the great Jesse Owens, who will be the featured guest of the evening. Other honored guests will be 12 high school seniors who have been each selected by their respective Albany high schools as exemplifying all-around fitness in the American boy and girl. In recognition of their outstanding achievements, Fanny Berth will award each of them an Olympic-style jacket and achievement shield, and an annual sports night would not be complete without the presentation of Banani Berth Sports Award. This year's recipient will be Philip Schuyler High School's popular basketball coach, Larry O'Neill was being given the award in recognition of his outstanding work with youth in the city of Albany. These are just a few of the reasons that you don't want to miss Annie Burr's fifth annual sports night on February 18th. 
Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial, serving Albany, Troy, and Schenectady.